Hello everyone, I am Saurabh Singh and I am a research scientist at Google. This is joint work with my colleague Shankar Krishnan. I will be talking about our work on a new normalization layer that eliminates the dependence on batch sizes. Normalization methods improve training by stabilizing activations in a model. This leads to a better conditioned optimization problem, enabling reliable training of deeper and more powerful models, as well as training with higher learning rates resulting in faster training. Let's take a closer look at key aspects of batch normalization. A given activation X of some arbitrary layer is normalized using population mean and variance estimates to produce the normalized activation X hat. Here epsilon is a small constant to prevent divide by zero. However, during training, we don't have access to population means and variances since the activations are continuously evolving. Therefore, estimates computed from mini batch are used instead. During testing, an exponential moving average of the mini batch statistics is used as an approximation of the population statistics. However, batch normalization suffers from a couple of key issues that limit its applicability. First, it introduces dependence between mini batch samples. Further, batch normalization requires large enough mini batches. This makes it unsuitable for tasks needing large input sizes. In this visualization, we quantify the effect of batch size on the performance of batch normalization. We plot the ImageNet accuracy of a ResNet V2 model as a function of the number of images used to compute the normalization statistics. The performance degrades significantly as the batch size is reduced. Coming back, these limitations can be attributed to the computation of normalization statistics over stochastic mini batches. Please see the references for more details. Existing methods that attempt to address these shortcomings can be divided into two main categories methods that reduce the train test discrepancy and methods that avoid normalization over the batch and instead normalize each sample independently. We now compare the performance of best performing methods for each of those categories. Batch renormalization in yellow significantly improves the performance over batch normalization, while group normalization in green restores the performance for smaller batch sizes. However, these methods either still lose performance for smaller batches or do not match the performance of batch normalization for larger batch sizes or introduce artificial constraints on the model architecture. As we will see, our method addresses these issues while outperforming all these methods. As we saw earlier, batch normalization uses estimates of population statistics to normalize. Normalized activations are then transformed using a scale and offset followed by the ReLU nonlinearity. In contrast, sample-based normalization methods get rid of the problematic batch dimension and use statistics computed from the sample itself. Note that the equations are essentially the same, with the only difference in the set of activations over which the normalization statistics are computed. We argue that this specific form is just a legacy of batch normalization and doesn't necessarily make sense for sample-based methods. As a pathological example, consider a one-cross-one -one feature map. Naive application of this normalization will simply yield zero. With FRN, we revisit this form, especially with these pathological cases in mind. FRN is a sample-based normalization method that normalizes each channel independently like batch norm, but with several key changes. It does not perform any mean subtraction. Normalization is performed using uncentered second moment, and epsilon is turned into a learnable parameter. This is necessary to deal with pathological cases of one cross one activation maps. Please refer to the paper for more details. Finally, since lack of mean subtraction may result in, in an arbitrary bias away from zero, a learnable threshold is used to, by ReLU to yield a new activation, TLU. Coming back to our graph, we see that FRN gets rid of all the earlier mentioned issues. It retains performance for the small batch sizes and outperforms all the methods for at all batch sizes. There are a few key practical considerations that we found to be useful to effectively train models using FRN layer. Final performance benefited from continuous learning rate schedules such as cosine decay. Slowly ramping up of the learning rate at the beginning of the training was essential for many non-resident models. And lastly, we found it useful to replace all activations in the model by TLU as opposed to just the ones following normalization. In conclusion, FRN eliminates batch dependency and achieves consistent performance for all batch sizes. And FRN outperforms all other methods including batch normalization at all batch sizes. Thank you for listening and please refer to the paper for additional experiments and details.